family members are coming to USF with you, you will eventually have to say goodbye. Goodbye is a word used to express salutations or parting ways. There are many different ways people can say goodbye. Bye bye, so long, peace out, and see you soon or a few. My personal favorite is see you later alligator. It is funny because the other person in most cases is not an alligator. Many accompany a goodbye with a wave, a handshake, or a hug. But be aware, being too happy or too excited while saying goodbye might make the other person think you are eager to see them go. While some students may feel excited to start their time at USF, some may feel nervous, and some may feel a mix of both emotions. It is completely acceptable to have emotions. If you do not have emotions, you might be a robot. All non-robot students will soon realize that other students have the same emotions as you do. After saying goodbye, there are multiple options for you to stay in touch with your friends and family back home. Phone calls, text messages, and emails are all great options. Or, if you want to feel old school, you can exchange handwritten letters in the mail. However, receiving letters will take some time. If communication is urgent, we suggest that you use technology, such as your phone or a computer. We can thank robots for one thing, and that is faster communication. Make your friends and family members aware of what days and times are the best to communicate. The last thing you want is for your entire class to hear your embarrassing ringtone. That would be embarrassing. At first, you may miss your friends and family or feel homesick. Again, this is completely normal. Once USF becomes your new home, you will realize that it is not goodbye, it is go Bulls. Get ready to live the Bulls life. There's extra support for everyone living on campus. One person you will meet right away is your resident assistant, or RA. RA stands for resident assistant. As the name suggests, this team member will assist you, the resident. They know where things are located, how to do things, and how to get free things. They know things you do not know. By talking with your RA, you will learn new things, important things. Your RA will be friendly and helpful. If they are not, they are an imposter and should be reported to a real RA immediately. Your RA is a special person who is here to help you live the Bulls life. Jessica Barron, Sierra Rose, Elisa Goldberg, Max Morinelli, Kayla Williams, Matt Satchwell, Burley Gomez, Jennifer Drew Bear, Taylor Finke, Stephanie Jockman, Jeremy Lamberti. Wednesday, April 24th, 2019. Coming to you from the beautiful University of South Florida campus in Tampa, it's USF Housing Live. Good evening, everyone. This is USF Housing Live. I'm your host, Jessica Barron, with Housing and Residential Education at the beautiful University of South Florida in Tampa. Our motto, best place to live, best place to work, best place to learn. Tonight's episode is USF is for families too. A reminder to everyone joining us live that we are here to answer your questions so you're ready to live the bull's life. If you have a question, no matter where or how you're watching, just type it in the comments and we will answer you in real time. We have a full show ahead of us, so let's go ahead and meet tonight's guest. Joining us this evening is a student majoring in global business and minoring in environmental policy. She serves as a residential guide here at Housing and Residential Education and is here tonight with her family. Welcome, Jillian Olortegui. Hi, yeah, I'm Jillian. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for being here, Jillian. We also have a proud bull dad and USF alum that earned his Bachelor of Science in Microbiology. Joining us tonight, Ed Olortegui. Ed, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Um, go ahead, Julian. Tell us who you are and what you do here at USF. Yeah, so I'm a first year student. This is my second semester here at USF. Um, the first thing that I ever got involved in on campus was an LLC, actually. Um, I'm in the Bulls Business Community LLC in Poplar. And um, with this LLC, you go to company tours, you get to network with alumni, which is really cool. And you're also in a class that teaches you about business etiquette and uh, public speaking. So I really, really like the LLC and the connections I made and the people that I met. 
Um, I'm also a residential guide, which is through the housing department, which is a really fun job. I love my coworkers. It's just, it's a blast getting to uh, talk to the incoming students and being able to share my experiences. And um, I'm also a security guard at the art museum, which I really like to say, because when I say that, they're like, wait, there's an art museum on campus? And I'm like, yes, there is. You should check it out. <laughs> and Ed, who are you? Go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Well, my name is Ed Olortegui. Um, I actually came to uh, the Tampa area back in 91, uh, came to USF as my only choice to come to school here. Um, graduated uh, in 96 with the degree in microbiology. Um, I'm currently a pharmacist, and, um, and I'm, I enjoy uh, playing tennis on, on my time off. Awesome. Well, Julian, let's go ahead and start with some questions. Tell us about your transition. What was it like coming to college for the very first time? I was super excited. Um, it's a huge transition, obviously, from high school, and I just love like this newfound freedom that I had. I get to pick the classes when and where I want them to be. Um, I get to go to meetings that obviously weren't um, offered at a high school. Like I recently went to an anthropology club meeting and there's no such thing as that on most high school campuses. So the transition was awesome. There were so many new things that I learned about my own life that I, or about my own experiences that I didn't necessarily, I couldn't have um, that in high school. So I think the transition was really cool for me as a young adult. Jillian, but what about move-in day? What was that like? Be honest, did you cry a little bit? No, I didn't. I was pretty excited. I mean, if you ask my parents, it's a little different story. But I was super excited to be in my own living space. Obviously, I had my own room in a house, but I was in a house with my family. And now I'm in a pod with 35 other business majors since I was in the LLC. And um, I just, it was amazing. I was like, wow, I'm finally an adult. I have my own fridge, my own microwave. Um, and I can just, I have my own agenda, basically. So I was super excited to live on campus. Well, Jillian, you gave us your permission. Your dad is here. So Ed, d tell us the truth. Did you cry during move-in day? Not quite, um, but months coming towards, uh, um, towards August, the move-in date, uh, Jillian kept saying, in two months, I'm going to move. In two months, it's very excited while mom and dad are, are kind of uh, like, no, we don't want that day to come, but we do want it because we know uh, the potential that she has. And um, moving her was, was easy since we moved a couple of days before because of Bull Hall. Um, moving, or first time she has a refrigerator, first time she has a microwave, but the hardest part was um, leaving. You know, the moment that you, you are like, okay, we're done moving and now we don't want to leave you, but we have to. So we, um, saying goodbye was a little tough when you drive away and you see your child walk the other way and you don't know if you're going to see her next weekend or next or two weekends or, or if you're going to see her anytime during the semester. But uh, it, was, it was very exciting, the moving day. Yeah, I think no amount of prepare, preparation can actually get you ready for that moment, right? Exactly. Um, Jillian, how did you actually stay in contact with your family throughout this transition process? Yeah, so um, me and my parents, we've always had a group chat. Uh, obviously, it was used a lot more frequently once I got to college because I wasn't seeing them every day when I came home from high school. So we definitely communicated through group chat. We were always texting. Um, I have a specific ringtone for the group chat, so I know when it's them. I know when they're like, hey, what's up? How are you doing? Um, and then obviously, I do call them. Um, Honestly, I could say I didn't call them as much as I wanted to. So everyone out there listening, please call your parents as much as you possibly can because I should have called my parents a lot more than I did. And I realized this, especially this semester, second semester, I started calling them a lot more and they were just so grateful to hear my voice all the time. Jillian, does that mean that you felt homesick? And if you did, how did you actually deal with those emotions? Yeah, I definitely started feeling more homesick second semester because first semester, it's kind of a blur. It's like, wow, you're living by yourself for the very first time. Um, you have all of this freedom. You don't know what to do with it, per se. And then um, second semester, I, was, I started like settling into college. And then I started talking to my parents more. And I'm like, wow, I really miss them. I miss home, um, obviously, because school was getting tough, obviously. So I wanted to just like lay in my bed, uh, chill with my dogs, and then spend time at home. So Jillian, overall, what has been your favorite part about being a bull? Being a bull, 
Um, I'm sure you've heard many people say this, but my favorite thing about being a bull is all the resources on campus. And I will elaborate on the word resources because I feel like it is thrown around a lot. But for me personally, one of um, my favorite resources is, this is going to be really specific, but it's the massage chairs in the, the Marshall Student Center. Um, this past semester, their hours increased from like three hours a day to eight hours a day. And personally for me, um, I like getting massages because I have a couple like athletic injuries and it is kind of hard trying to find a massage parlor off campus. So I can just go there and they're super friendly. You can get like a five minute massage or 15 minute massage. And it's just like really cool that a campus has massage chairs. Yeah, you definitely took advantage <laughs> of those. That's yes. great to hear. Um, Ed, I have a couple of questions for you. How did you actually keep in contact with Jillian? Um, we've always been texting. Um, that's something that we didn't have back in the day. And, and group chat is uh, something we text uh, just directly to each other. We have, you know, at the beginning, Jillian had questions about like, when are we going to pay school? What happened with uh, financial aid? Or what? It, so I was the, the person for that. Uh, but then mom was another, you know, other little things that between mom and, and Jillian had to talk. But the group chat has always helped. We've always been um, there for her whenever she sends that chat um, at one o'clock in the morning. Like, we got to respond. But uh, talking on the phone, um, we always wanted to be more frequent at the beginning because we miss her more than uh, sometimes we think that she missed us. Oops. But, uh, but it, 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 it was, it's been well. And Ed, you know, after this first year with Jillian being here at USF, what advice would you say you have to give parents and families who might be going through this transition as well? Um, the school really sets the students to, uh, to succeed. Um, there are so many resources uh, just I was just uh, amazed when we did orientation with her and they told us if your child uh, feels, uh, uh, if your student feels um, homesick, uh, come to us. We, we're going to set you up or we're going to find what are your likes and, and we can set you up with somebody else if you don't know how to study or you're flunking and, and you cannot concentrate because you miss your parents, you miss family. There is a department for that. So uh, that has been amazing. Um, um, Ed, and what has been your favorite thing about USF and being a part of the Bull family? USF is such a great campus, uh, not only to the eyes, to, to seeing the campus so big, and, uh, but just the people are so friendly. I mean, the diverse uh, uh, ethnicities that we have here at USF, is, 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 I'm proud that USF is that way. Um, and everybody is really nice no matter where you go. If you go to uh, get coffee or if you go to the library or the Marshall Center, everybody's being really nice. Perfect. Well, Jillian and Ed, thank you so much for being here tonight and sharing all of your experiences with us. Thank you. Thank you. It's time for us to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more USF Housing Live right after this. Hi, I'm Jessica Fitzgerald and I serve in the Office of Parent Family Programs. So we are the home on campus for family members of USF students. We support them through the transition of their students into the institution by providing resources for them, education on campus events that are happening or that resources that their students connect to. Um, and then we also get to host fun events for family members. So our first one is the welcome reception. Um, and then our kind of signature event of the year is Family and Friends Weekend. I think my advice for them really would be to be confident that their student has chosen a really great institution to call home for their college experience um, and for the students just to be vulnerable and go out to events to meet other students. One thing that we tell families and students is if they can really stay on campus uh, for that first 90 days that that helps them to really acclimate to their campus community here. So a couple different ways that they can get in touch with us. We have a family email account which is family at usf.edu. Um, they can also find us through our website, usf.edu slash families. They can also call at any time, and our phone number is 813-974-2896. Um, we also have a pretty active Facebook group that's private for family members that they can join. Go Bulls!
Welcome back everyone. This is USF Housing Live. I'm Jessica Barron and it's time to introduce our next guest. This staff member has provided quality service to students and families for over five years and has worked at USF for over 15 years. She's the director of New Student Connections and Parent and Family Programs. Welcome to the show, Carrie Riegler. Hi, thanks for having me tonight. Thanks for being here, Carrie. We also have another member of the Olortegui family joining us on the show. She's also a proud USF alum who earned her Bachelor of Science in Microbiology. Welcome, Heather Olortegui. Hi, nice to be here. Thanks for being here. So, Carrie, let's go ahead and start with you. Who are you and what do you do here at USF? Sure. Well, as you know, my name is Carrie Regler. I'm the director for the Office of New Student Connections and Parent and Family Programs here at USF. And really, my job is to work with a group of staff members and students to really welcome our new students and families to the University of South Florida. So we make sure that they're transitioning into the institution, know about the resources that are available to them so they can have a successful journey. So proud to be here, proud to help our students and our families. We're happy to have you here, too. <laughs> Heather, what about you? Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Heather Alortigui. I'm Jillian's mother. I also have another one at home. Um, originally, I was a stay at home for 15 years. I started going back to work three years ago because the kids are growing up, which helped me transition into this new phase where my daughter's at college now. And um, that's about it. <laughs> I'm a college mom now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a USF mom. Awesome. Well, before we get started with the questions, we have a viewer named Brilly who's watching and says, cooking dinner and watching my favorite show, USF Housing Live. Miss you guys. We miss you too, Brilly. Well, Carrie, let's go ahead and start with you. Why should family members engage with your office? Yeah, well, I think there's a variety of things that the Office of Parent and Family Programs offers our family members. First thing is, I think we offer a place of community. So through our various events that we offer on campus throughout the year, and also online through our Facebook page and our Facebook group, really give our family members an opportunity to connect with staff members and other family members going through this journey with them. It's a great way for them to understand that they're not alone in this process. The other thing I think we offer is a lot of really great resources and information. So there's a lot of steps to transition to the institution, right? And the first year is often really overwhelming. And so our offices uh, make sure that we can provide the information that our families and students need at the time that they need it. So those great reminders of, hey, don't forget, it's time to submit a FAFSA, or oh my gosh, here are some really great questions we would encourage you to have with your student as they prepare for finals. Uh, and the last thing I think I would highlight that we do is we really provide support. So often Often during the first year, our students run into some difficult barriers that might be a situation they've never experienced. And often maybe family members need some advice or some suggestions or resources that their student could take advantage of. And so we have staff members on site. One of them is here tonight, Tara Magley. She just joined the Office of Parent and Family Programs and will be here to support you all along with myself this year. Uh, and we're just there to answer your questions and really provide the support you need. So that's why a family member should be able to take advantage of our space and really utilize us, we're their office here to support them as they support their students. Carrie, there's lots of ways that it sounds like you support families. Yes. Um, how can families actually become part of the campus community here at USF? Yeah, I think the biggest part and what we're learning about our families is they want their USF journey alongside their student's journey. So while they're interested in what their student is doing, they also want to be a part of this place and can become their identity with USF. So we would encourage them to take advantage of the events that we offer, um, wear their USF green and gold apparel, right? Always being representing USF when they're out in the community. And certainly, last but not least, uh, really be a part of the experience through various different events that are offered on campus, whether that's USF, um, ULS, athletic events, whatever it might be that really interests them to be a part of this space. Awesome. Heather, um, she me Carrie mentioned a lot of different resources. What resources did you use that felt, helped you feel connected to the university? Well, the first thing we did was hit the USF bookstore. We all got shirts for the family. Uh, always had the decal on the car. And um, also, um, the um, USF um, Family and Parent website, the Facebook page for the parents we're a part of, and I get the monthly emails that has all the important dates. And like she said, being involved in on campus, some of the events were theater productions that we've seen with our daughter, taking advantage of going to Bulls Market and um, visiting the gardens. Uh, so they make it very easy. And coming here and dine with her, you know, and having lunch and enjoying the campus. 
Heather, why do you think these resources are so important for families? Uh, because um, you are away from your children for so long, and when you, it gives you an opportunity to come and make that surprise visit and have some good quality time with them. Okay. Carrie, um, another question. What events do you have coming up for family members? Sure, so I'd like to highlight four. The first one is orientation. We really encourage family members, even if it's just one or a friend of that student, to attend orientation. They start in June. It's really where we provide a wealth of information about the institution, the resources, and how our family members can best be situated and set up for success to help their student. Then, uh, on both opening days, both in summer, which is June 21st, I believe, and fall, which is August 22nd, we'll do welcome tents for our family members, where we've got really great promos, little tissue packets, because you never know what that day is going to be like, um, and just really great resources to welcome our families to campus and our students. Then I'd like to highlight the welcome reception, August 22nd, 6 p.m., the Alumni Association um, in the Alumni Center. We'll be welcoming our families. Great way for you to just kind of unwind after maybe that move-in day and that space where you want to connect with other family members who have just said goodbye to their student for that first time. And last but certainly not least, uh, family weekend. So that's October 11th through the 13th. Encourage our families to come out and really learn what it's like with their student to be here. Uh, it's a great way for our students to be able to showcase what their USF life is like uh, and to have their families be a part of it. So we encourage you to make your way. Carrie, what advice do you actually have for these parents going through the transition process? Yeah, I think the more conversations they can have over the summer with their student about managing some expectations, whether that's of who's going to take care of what responsibilities or who's going to make sure that the bills are paid or how often are you communicating? What mode of communication are you going to um, have? How often do you expect to call? Can I just drop in on campus, right, and a surprise visit? Or do you expect that I'm going to call first? Those conversations, I think, are really important to start to have over the course of the summer. Um, and I also, best advice I'd give to is allowing your student to start to join you in some of those kind of business transaction or life kind of experiences. So when you go to make that final doctor's appointment, encourage them to be right, by, right beside you doing that process with you. So the first time they call home and they're sick and then you, gotta, you don't have to walk them through all of it, you know that you kind of coach them through that over the summer when you made that appointment for them. So the more you can set them up for success to do some of that work over the summer on their own and independently, the more confident they will feel when they get here either in the summer or fall to be able to do that independently. Almost like training wheels. Right. It is, it is. While well, you're still there, right? It's a safety net. You can still provide that safety net when you're right there next to them. When they're gone and they're here, you just don't know. I mean, that's where the level of anxiety, I think, comes from our fam families is they don't know, oh, are they? can they do it? Will they do it? Are they able to do it? If you've done it with them, then you already have that confidence that yeah, they can I, do it. I see Heather over here nodding with a lot that you're saying. So, Heather, what advice do you actually have for parents and families going through the transition process? Maybe some of the things that Carrie mentioned. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, Move-in day, um, first of all, I had to let her be in charge of her room. I had to hold back not to help her decorate it and everything because she had everything her way. But also, like you said, teaching them how to be on their own because there was um, um, sh one time she got um, sick, woke up very sick. And she, I got the text message, she said, I have a test. Um, I have a presentation. I came get out of bed, so I had to work, uh, calm her down, just be there for them, tell her, take advantage of the clinic, go get that doctor's excuse, excuse and um, everything will be fine. And also, um, like they said, you, they need to start learning how to be independent. And one of the first things we did was take advantage of the USF Credit Union, get her set up with her first. Um, credit cards like they she can learn to take care of her own bills. <laughs> yeah, and it definitely helps when you do things one at a time and really make sure that they actually know exactly what they're doing. Right? Yes. <laughs> um, Carrie, I have another question. How can families best prepare their students now for life as a bull? Yeah, you know, I think some of them, again, those, you know, managing some of those expectations and having those upfront conversations. I think recognizing that sometimes our family members, the transition is harder for them, and you don't really know when the transition might happen for your student, right? In Jillian's case, she was super excited to come to USF from day one. Not all of our students may feel that way, right? Some of them may be a little bit more apprehensive or a little bit nervous about what is it like to leave home and to be successful here at USF. So I think I say to our students and I say to our family members, 
members, you know your student best, you know what they're gonna need, utilize the resources that are on campus, and just be supportive. I think most often, they just want that cheerleader in the corner that's gonna encourage them, that's gonna love them, that's gonna tell them it's okay. You know, And in many ways, our office parent and family programs is that for the family member, right? When they call up and they're like, oh my gosh, this happened, this happened, this happened, I can't believe it. We're there to kind of say, it'll be all right. You will figure this out. You've got support and we're here to help you help them. And so, you know, as the, the FIS family has articulated, really utilizing the resources that are here, um, we want to help you. We want our students and families to feel successful. And so leverage and allow us to be that process for them. Carrie, tell us about the most dreaded time, the move-in time. Yeah. Um, how can families best support their students during this time and the days, weeks, and months that follow after? Yeah, so again, I think we've kind of articulated this, but I think really knowing what that day is going to look like and talking ahead of time as a family, what does that look like? Um, I loved Heather's recommendation about letting the student really lead the process. I think that allows that student to enter USF with a lot of confidence on that first day and really setting some really great um, expectations up front, but also some great uh, just living into it uh, and being independent. So I would encourage that on day one. And the best thing you can do, and I've said this before, but you know your student. And so you know when they may be excelling and thriving in their USF experience, but you also may know when they may be struggling a little bit. And so encouraging them to take advantage of the resources or reaching out to our office, parent and family programs, so we can you know arm you with the resources that your student may need to be successful. And I often say it's harder on the families for this transition than it is for the student, right? As Ed talked about, he said goodbye to his daughter. He got back in the car, right? And off she went. And he didn't know what was happening. Neither did Heather, right? They didn't know what would happen. And I guarantee Jillian was off meeting with people, having, you know, lunch, dinner, whatever it might have been, probably at kickoff at that point, really loving the experience. And so often it's so hard for our families because they just don't know because they're not there anymore. Um, but trust in the process. Trust in your parenting. Um, and know that we're here to take good care of them. And Heather, my last question for you. What is your favorite part about being a part of the USF Bull family? Uh, the pride. Um, it's such a great campus and I feel, I feel very at ease. I'm a, I miss her a lot, but I feel like she's in great hands here. I have, n I'm not nervous about her being here, um, but I do miss her and I, but I'm, so proud that we have another generation in our family going into USF and possibly another one at home who's already showing some interest in his big sister going to USF. So he's got his shirt and I didn't think my ninth grader would, would even want to go to college, <laughs> but she's inspired him. And um, so wear your green and gold and go Bulls. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Carrie and Heather, thank you so much for sharing your experiences here with us, and we hope to have you back soon. Thanks. It's time for some special announcements. New students, are you looking to stay informed on what's happening on campus? There's an app for that. Download the Go Bulls Guides app on the App Store to access the new student and family event guide. Families, there's a Facebook group just for you. Visit facebook.com slash groups slash USF families to request to join so you can connect with other families. Are you interested in living in a living learning community? We still have spots left in most of our living learning communities, but they won't last forever and they will go fast. Explore your options at usf.edu slash LLC to find the community that's best for you. Do you want to move in early and for free? Consider volunteering for Bull Hall. Bull Hall is a tradition here on campus. Every year on grand opening day, Bulls volunteer to assist other students with the move-in process. Learn more and apply today at usf.edu slash housing. Well, that's just about all the time we have, but before we go, I want to remind you that USF Housing Live airs every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Join us for our next episode, Select a Room, Any Room, on Wednesday, May 8th, you can watch at facebook.com slash USF Housing, the USF Class of 2023 Facebook group, or in full 1080p high definition at youtube.com slash USF Housing. USF Housing Live is produced by Housing and Residential Education at the University of South Florida in Tampa. Our motto is best place to live, best place to work, and best place to learn. Thank you to tonight's guests, Carrie Riegler and the Olortegui family for joining me this evening. Thank you to our production crew, to you, our viewers, and of course, there's always just one last thing.
Go Bulls! Good night, everyone.